Sis and Herman Dupre have been an important part of the St. Vincent community for many, many years. Their friendship goes back to the earliest years. Herman was a student here at St. Vincent. He met Sis early on in his years and it became a great friendship between the two of them, a love that uh, nourished both of them in their early years and a love that produced nine wonderful daughters. Herman's always thinking and always trying to fix something, always trying to make something better. Some might call him a tinkerer, but he's really so much more than that. He's, he's an, an inventor, uh, he's a genius. He, he's able to take uh, problems and fix them uh, very quickly. Two things he was uh, actually very good at, and one was making snow, and the other was making baby girls. Sis uh, is a wonderful teacher. She taught in the Pittsburgh public schools for a number of years and probably more than anything else, a wonderful teacher to her nine daughters. Each one of them has had great achievements in their own lives and have gone on to be successful in the endeavors that they've undertaken. I think the, uh, the humility of the Dupre's is, is something that uh, just uh, uh, shines forth. They're unassuming people who are family-oriented and uh, fun-loving, but again, very quiet and uh, people who just want to make a difference uh, without calling attention to themselves. When the family and friends of Sis and Herman came to us with uh, the possibility of honoring them, it turned a seemingly impossible task to a very possible one. And we, we were able to, to take the enthusiasm of, of the family and friends of Sis and Herman and, and turn it into a great gift to St. Vincent and to future generations. That gift uh, really launched uh, this project. That uh, love that the family and friends of Sis and Herman uh, have for them really launched this uh, project forward. Herman Dupre was a, uh, is an alumnus of our college, chemistry graduate, uh, an individual who uh, was an inventor, an entrepreneur, uh, who developed snowmaking uh, equipment, some 34 patents. With the name of Herman Dupre present to all of our students that come into this space, we're creating an opportunity for that kind of story of the success of one of our alums that says to our chemistry majors, okay, perhaps this is the kind of road that you might follow. The Arch Abbott had in mind that the building would have a, a very glassy entrance. And so we took that concept and we developed uh, sort of the curved shape of the building uh, to really be sort of a form that envelops the person who's coming towards the building. And the whole notion was to convey the sense of hospitality uh, that the uh, Benedictines have as one of their tenants. And so as you're approaching the building, you come up to the curved glass entrance and uh, it really begins to envelop you and sort of invite you into the space. Once they're inside, then it's an opportunity for people in the sciences to interact with people outside the sciences. The space itself is aesthetically pleasing, it's friendly, it's very open, and I think that that's a great environment for people to interact with one another. When it's all said and done and you look at these laboratories, they really are among the best laboratories that you'll find in a college and university setting. And the, the college was very supportive from the beginning. Any initiative uh, or idea that the design team or the faculty had that would make these laboratories work better was supported. Now with the individual research labs, we are able to have students come in at any time to work on their research. And we have found that students come in and hang out there and talk about their research with other students, which is the way it's done in graduate school and in industry, not just in undergraduate colleges. We believe that education is not just in lab and lecture room. Education extends well beyond that. And, uh, a great advantage of the new building is that uh, the areas uh, like the atrium and uh, the areas upstairs uh, provide a great chance for the students from different majors to meet. And I'm just amazed at how many students actually use that lounge space. I've been in other new facilities where it's empty. It's like a ghost town, but here at St. Vincent in our new 
Dupre Science Pavilion, we now have students that are here all the time. I've come in at 11 o'clock in the evening and students have been in here in groups studying. So not only has it helped us educationally with the labs and the classroom, it's also helped the students interact with one another and with the professors. We're recognizing that since the 1960s, those demands have changed as the technology has changed, but at the same time, the way science is conducted has changed. We no longer pigeonhole uh, disciplines and departments into separate areas and say, this is chemistry, this is biology, this is physics. We recognize the full integration and the necessary integration of those sciences in the industry. The welcoming space I believe is going to allow us to stimulate an interest in science, mathematics, and computing uh, from a very early age for members of the community. When we originally looked at designing the Dupre Science Pavilion, uh, one of the things that we were most interested in was doing this as a uh, green building uh, and incorporating sustainable design features into the facility. Um, it all goes back to uh, wanting to tie this to the Benedictine tradition of being good stewards of the environment and how we could translate that into the three-dimensional form of a building. As the college is moving forward, this building is a perfect example of how we accomplish that, um, that mission of sustainability as we move forward to build and renovate other places and, and other buildings here on campus. The building is green in a lot of different ways. As we're standing here in the lobby, it gives you a nice feel of being uh, with the outside environment but yet being undercover. There are geothermal wells that are here that actually heat and cool this building without the assistance of other fossil fuels. There was a building that was sitting here on this ground. As it was demolished, 95% of it was recycled, uh, reused in other ways. One major way was that it was used to uh, uh, pave the roadway that we used to bring uh, materials in and out for the construction as it goes forward. It really begins to set the tone that uh, science is important here at St. Vincent uh, and I think it's more successful than practically any science building that we've seen across the country. As we dedicate this building, as we uh, honor Sis and Herman, there's, there's a ton of enthusiasm and I'm grateful to be able to be a part of that. I'm so proud that we have a school like St. Vincent's here in Western Pennsylvania. We've got a lot of great people here, and it's just, uh, I, uh, Sis and I wish you nothing but the continued good success. We, uh, deep down, hope someday there will be some scientist come out of La Trobe and they'll say, we cured cancer, or we cured Alzheimer's, or we cured something and it came right out of this building. So this is a big tree and we hope it drops a lot of good fruit.